I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are we ready to receive our daily bread today? Come on now, let's go. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Every time you say this, expect a miracle praise god and don't forget to join us at the lunch hour prayer meeting today get enriched praise god now we'll be looking at the things concerning our salvation praise god and we're in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 and i was explaining to you yesterday why he says if any man be in christ he is a new creature he didn't say a new person. He said a new creature. So we are new creatures because before you got saved, you were a living soul. And after you got saved, what happened at salvation? This thing is very important. What happened at salvation? At salvation, you received the Spirit of God in you. And from that moment, your life became, you became alive, fully alive to God. Now, that was what happened at salvation. Follow me now. And I said, this had to happen before, this had to happen after the coming of Jesus. Why? Because it was ordained from the beginning that it is Jesus that will come and give man life. So irrespective of what Adam and Eve did, probably if they hadn't seen, not probably, truly, if they haven't, hadn't seen, this would still have happened. Jesus would still have come. Maybe he would have come earlier. That, that is me now. Praise God. I didn't say God said so. That is me now because I feel the process of sin just extended the whole thing. <laughs> now, if they had been in obedience to God, if they had followed because the tree God said they should not eat was a point of obedience. You know, some people say uh, it was not a physical tree. Come on now, don't get into all those silly arguments. They are silly arguments. Just reading the Bible will tell you that it was a physical tree. Because the Bible says it grew from the ground. It grew. Go read it yourself. It grew. Say out of the ground. The Lord God made trees to grow. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then the tree of life. They both grew from the ground. Secondly, when the serpent was talking to Eve. And the Bible says she looked at it and saw that this tree is good for food. You know how someone, you know, when God gave them an instruction, God gave Adam the instruction, and, and, and imagine, I, I can just imagine Adam trying to hit it on his wife after she came and say, see this tree, ah, this tree is a mysterious tree. Don't eat it. Don't even touch it. Because that's what she said. So she just felt in her mind that there's a mystery about this tree. And suddenly she looked at the tree again when the serpent was talking to her. I was like, come on now. It's a normal tree that has fruits. I mean, truly, uh, come on, Adam, <laughs> praise God. And then she plugged it and ate of it. Just they ate a physical tree or physical fruit from a physical tree. Now, when they ate the tree, was that what now spoiled everything? What spoiled everything was their disobedience to God. The tree was nothing, but the obedience was everything. So God put that tree as a point of obedience. That look, if you obey me to this point, then I'll open the next revelation to you. And if you obey me to this point, now that's how God deals with us. He set us on our journey. 
and that he creates points and points of obedience in our lives. And if you keep obeying and believing in him, then things will be opening up to you. See, that's why God had to come later and told them that, hey, you have robbed me. He says, all these nations say, wow. He said, because of your tithes. So God set an obedience for them to keep. And they were not keeping it. They got foolish about it and began to, began to behave anyhow. And God shows up and says, hey, something is wrong with you guys. Not because God needed their money, but he needed them to obey. And that was the point of obedience. For example, we, in life, you teach people things. Now, if, if there is no exam to check what people have learned, how do you know people have learned what, they, what you taught them? You go to school for a whole semester. You are being trained. You are being taught something. You're giving books to read. You're giving. Now, fine. Now, it is assumed this knowledge has been impacted into you. But how do you know for sure? By setting an examination. See? Now, that examination doesn't determine truly if you are really smart or if you're going to be a success. It really doesn't. But it just determines that you have learned those things things that you have been taught, those books that you have been commanded to read. The examination is proof that you studied them and you understood them. It doesn't mean because you failed the exam, you're going to be a failure in life. No, it just means that you didn't yet understand those things you were instructed for that period. If you failed the exam, are you following me now? So. Now then, God kept that tree as their examination. Let me know if these people will really obey me. Now you see God doing the same thing to the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. God says, hey, there was the shortcut for you guys to take. Now something I've always said, remember, Moses came from, God met Moses at the burning bush. And God said to Moses, Moses, you're going to go to Egypt and bring my children out of Egypt. And when you bring them, you will bring them to this mountain that you're on now. And they will worship me here. That's, that's the instruction he received. Now he got into Egypt, brought the children out. And the moment they were coming out of Egypt, God said, hey, Moses. Now the Bible never said Moses crossed the Red Sea when he was going to Egypt or when he was fleeing from Egypt. But now as they were leaving Egypt, God showed up and said, Moses, this is how you're going to go. I said, okay, how? Because Moses, I'm sure Moses just thought we'll follow the road we came from. God said, no, I'm putting an angel to guide you. It's going to be a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Okay, as though I don't know the way, follow the angel. Yes, sir. And then the angel began to lead them in a different path. And think about it, the first place the angel led them to was the Red Sea, an obstacle. Have you ever wondered what went, went through Moses', Moses mind, his angel? I was saying it too, because I knew where we turned off the right parts. Maybe there was another way now, see. Got to the Red Sea. And God said, look, I, I made them to go on that journey. Then he said, I suffered them to be hungry. And all he did, he said, I did all that to check what is in their hearts, whether they will obey me or not. So God puts marks of obedience for us. He said, I wanted to know if they will obey me or not. So God who is omniscient cannot tell who will obey him or not. No, because we have been given our free will. You know, these are things people don't get. Yeah, after all, God knows everything I will do. So what's the point? No. He doesn't know everything you are going to do. The only thing, now God knows everything that you can do because he created you. But what you would decide to do is in your own authority and power. If you're going to serve God and please him, it's in your power. If you're going to be disobedient to God, it's in your power. Quit thinking like that lazy thought that hey, if, if, if I will serve God, now he knows. No, he, he may have planned for you to serve him, 
but the choice of serving him is completely yours. Jesus had the opportunity to withdraw from going to the cross. He had that opportunity. You remember one time the pain was too much for him in his heart that he said, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he closed that prayer up by saying, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. See, God called Moses and told him to bring the people into the promised land. But did Moses enter the promised land? No, because Moses disobeyed God. So you find these things. The fact that God has called you to something doesn't mean you are going to get into that thing. You have a role to play. So now we look at this. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I said new creature because he is now spirit, soul, and body. Now what is the work of the Holy Spirit in your body? The moment you got born again, the first thing that was done is that you were grafted into Christ. And that's what the Bible says. And we're going to go deeper into that tomorrow. But you were grafted into Christ as a branch. Follow me now and, and this will bless you. Because people don't... We, you know, many times people don't realize that this thing is a real thing. It's not, it's not something we do by quoting scriptures. It's not something we do by expanding knowledge. It's something we do for real. We live it. The Christ life is to be lived. We live it. We don't just talk it. We live it. So the moment you got born again, you were draft, grafted into Christ. How were you grafted into Christ? Now, this is it. The Holy Spirit in you is the same Holy Spirit that is in heaven. The Holy Spirit in you is the same Holy Spirit that is in Jesus. The Holy Spirit in you is the same Holy Spirit that is in me. The same Spirit. And he, he, he doesn't come into you and like he disconnected from, from, from heaven and came to dwell inside you. No, he is connected. Now he is your connection to the nature of God. The Holy Spirit in you. Let's, let's look at this now. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. This is all Jesus was talking about here. He says, from verse 1, he says, I am the vine, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. And then he says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he, the husbandman, that's my father, take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, and that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, in verse 5, he says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So how did we come to become the branches in the vine? Because of the Holy Spirit that came to live in us. Now watch this. The Holy Spirit in us connected us to the vine. But you see, this connection, that's why I tell people salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not the work of any pastor. Yes, the pastor's job is to preach. The pastor's job is to share his testimony. But the work of salvation is solely done by the Holy Spirit. Because no pastor can force you to be a branch. <laughs> no matter the amount of prayer and laying on of hands, no one can force you to be a branch. So we bring people to the altar and we trust that their hearts will be willing and then the Holy Spirit will find them and he will do the work of salvation. That's why I say when you get saved, something happened to you. You didn't just say, you know, someone said, now by faith, you are, you know, we use that word loosely without understanding. What does it mean by faith? He say, don't think about it, just believe. No, that's not faith, praise God. That's not faith. Faith is a response to something that you got. So if you didn't get anything, 
then there is nothing to have faith for. You understand what I'm saying? So, but when the Spirit of God comes into a man, you should know that something came into you. You should know that something has happened. Your eyes will spark. I'm telling you the truth. So you mean, um, if, if I didn't feel anything at all, it means nothing happened? It's not the feeling, but the knowing. I'm telling you, I mean, if, if, if you're standing by the road and a car passes with top speed, you'll feel something. Even if you are blind, you feel something. You just know that there's a presence. There's something, something passed, something moved you. So how can the Holy Spirit come into you and you just still feel normal? Nothing, I mean. You know, we don't judge by feelings, don't get me wrong. But there is a knowing that something happens. To me. That day I went to that altar, something happened to me. If you don't have any iota of reasoning where this is concerned, then truly maybe nothing happened to you. Praise God. Oh, we've got to stop here now. Praise God. No time. Praise God. No, don't worry. One day we'll sit at the feet of Jesus and, and, and we'll not look at time. <laughs> it's good. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'll see you at 12 for the lunch hour prayer meeting. God bless you. Bye-bye.